we have a soaking rain. Uh, I guess we got about an inch of rain, and that has been enough to loosen this. And you see these different plants here. This is a this is often called pigweed or um, white man's footprint. Um, it's the greater plant and plantago major, which can be a pot herb. Uh, I think there are some medicinal uses for it. The Plantago lanceolata, which is a pretty common field weed or herb around here, also has some medicinal properties that are that are similar. Like I, th I think they're less in this plant than in the lanceolata, which is long, thin leaves. Here's one, this is, I don't know where this one came from, why we have so much of it around, but uh, uh, this is a kind of a pot herb or flavoring in Chinese cooking, I guess, primarily. It's sometimes called beefsteak plant. this material that I'm pulling, I'm putting in a green layer on the compost heap. I suppose some people would use a long-handled tool of some sort for this. Uh, maybe a cultivator could be used to loosen up the plants. I just find it's as easy to bend over and do it. <clears throat> I remember I used to drive around a lot with my wife and we'd see people looking out or working in their gardens we'd see them bent over like this and I'd always say bend from the knee uh, but quite frankly I I have found over the years that it is more comfortable anyway not to crouch down but to just bend over hello can I take this here
this side, I gotta be careful because as I, as I work in, I'm working into the strawberry bed, and strawberries are very, very easily pulled up, which at this point I don't know that I really want to deal with. Oh, that's strawberry. Strawberries and onions are supposed to be kept separate from each other, but uh, if they grow into each other's space, I'm not going to intervene too much. If you look at the general shape of the garden, you might be saying to yourself, well, I don't think he interferes at all, but I do. Uh, This is a good size of garden if it's just one person working it, but uh, it would be better to have more hours to work it too, and, I, and maybe a dedicated budget for seed. Because I'm not. I'm, I'm good at saving seeds from some plants, but I don't have a real full range of seed for the whole garden. So, we're, we're really past the time for planting a lot of things, although planting out plants at this stage could still be okay, you know, like peppers and so on. That, I guess we're now into the second week of June. And I was much more involved and careful about such things I would already have most of the summer crops certainly would be planted already. But getting kind of old and lazy. I work a lot with beds like this, uh, possibly you saw some of the videos of the bed preparation, check them out. Uh, I work kind of a modified version of what I learned from John Jeevens and Alan Chadwick uh, of a double dug deep bed. So theoretically one works down two spade depths and you work in rotted organic material like manure, rotted manure. They do that turning like once a year. After a while, what I find is that it's enough, there's enough development in the bed that I try not to step on the bed proper, but it's hard to avoid doing some of these things. But essentially, you just want the bed to be as, as fluffy and untouched as it can be. And in theory, at any rate, I work with a standard size bed, which is usually works out to be more like four feet across and about 10 feet long. But in theory, it's a 
five by ten for purposes of calculation of what how much seed to buy, for example, you know, figuring on each bed being about uh, 500 square feet, or you double it, 1,000 square feet. Last year I let a lot of the evening primrose develop fully. Uh, that's this plant and it's, uh, I guess it was originally imported as a, as a pot herb and food crop. The, the root is edible, the, the, uh, the leaves are edible. I'm not a big fan. Uh, the seeds are supposed to be high in omega-3 fatty acids or some such thing. And I never really bothered with it too much. It's a pretty plant. It attracts intriguing critters. Um, the evening, I think it's called hawk moth or hawk bill moth, some such thing. They're big, like a sphinx moth. They like the evening primrose. This garden was first laid out, plotted, I guess it was about four years ago. This had been a burn pit. Uh, and where I'm working now, the soil was baked hard. It was like a, a brick, really hard to to uh, get a fork into and 
just a few years of working it and putting compost down. This was a this was a compost bed. This space right here was a compost bed at two years ago. And that really makes a huge transformation. This soil is you know it's really it's loose. It's got a lot of organic material in it. There's my late father-in-law said, that's good dirt. Strawberries. It hasn't worked out this way for a variety of reasons, but my early plotting of this garden uh, left spaces down the middle here, or left a space down the middle, so that a lawnmower machine could be brought in and keep the, the central path as a sort of a lawn, a mowed lawn. And too, too many different things have been piled up in the middle. So I got a pile of compost behind me here. It's mostly covered in stuff grown, grown over. I'm gonna say that that's mostly done and uh, wasn't wasn't too painful. Now this bed here 
Uh, you'll see it's mostly the same sort of plant. This is a type of stem spinach and um, it's forming seed and that is my intent is to get seed for future crops. This is a very interesting plant that um, I found that you can dry this, pull it by the root and allow it to dry and then uh, reconstitute in some warm water and that's a way to have you know to store the spinach crop and I I discovered that you know just by having some stuff in the refrigerator that dried out you know and then I figured okay well I can do this um, because I get huge harvests and I really I'm not that keen on freezing stuff because I just don't I don't have a large freezer so um, but if I can dry things and reconstitute them then that's great so here's another bed that needs needs that treatment but I need to take a little break